Bishop Graham. And today is the last Sunday in this month of August. I don't know about you, but from January till now, God has kept me. I don't know your testimony. My own is, from January till now, God has kept me. And because I'm lifting up my voice to thank him, I know that he will yet keep me to the end of this month. That last stanza says, we will declare his praises in song. And today, all I've just, I, I, I've not been able to say thank you. I've never said thank you. But it's just been coming in songs. It's just been my praise, my thanksgiving has been coming in songs. So you will not mind though, because we are going to sing. We are going to thank God. We are going to praise God in song. Don't mind if I go out the time, but that's just how it's coming. And you can take your own song, but you don't have to sing mine. But I want you to thank God. Isabaya was taking the prayers this morning. And we are thanking God. God who forgives our sin. Let's thank God this morning. Let's lift up our voice. We don't need any whining. God is our life giver, is our life saver. God is our protector. God is our our love, our life. He's our he's, he's our awesome wonder. He's a good God. He's good to us. He's mercy. We cannot count it. We cannot even begin. We took a song when I think of the goodness of God. All he has done for me. My very soul will continue to shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord for saving me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Every day that I have breath in me, I will sing praises. I will thank God because if I if my, all my hair were to turn to tongues, they are not enough to thank God. If a million of me were to duplicate, they are not enough to thank God. God is good and it is nature to do good. But guess what? I'm privileged to enjoy that goodness. I'm blessed to enjoy that mercy. I am blessed to enjoy that goodness, that mercy. He preserves me, he protects me, he guides me, he keeps me, he answers my prayer. Everything that every time my prayer goes up, there's only one thing God does for me, and that is one time. It may not be my time, but when the time is right, I will see the manifestation of the goodness of God in my life. Father, I give you praise, I give you glory. Of my Lord, yeah, you do
I have a testimony. It's time to declare what God has done. We want to testify. We want to encourage somebody with your testimony. We want to tell somebody this morning that God is good. We want to tell somebody this morning that God continues to show for me. I don't know what I deserve. This of this my father, what is just good to me. So if you have a testimony this morning, I can see two, two hands up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Okay. Let's have it. Can I see those hands up again? Let's start from those hands up. I think it was ending. So we'll start from this one. So Tuchiwa first. The next two. Glory three. Rakish four. Five. Six. Sister Sarah. Seven. Brother Andy. Eight. Um, Sadness. Nine. Minister Bola. I mean, Minister Biotun. So I hope you all know your number. When did you explain it? Number ten. Sister. Me, I have a testimony for you. I can see your husband too. The testimony is back. Hallelujah. All right. So, what God has done for you? We've already signed it. So, don't sing. Don't sing Okay. So, I want to thank God for his faithfulness, for his love. I've been believing God for a job, a better job, since July. And I want to thank God that even before school will resume, I already got the better Hallelujah! She's so good to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, so, on the 17th of this month, I saw my second semester results and I I feel one of my I kept telling I told my mom and my sister that this cannot be my result. Uh, I cannot fail this course. And then I asked so many people and they said that oh I should write the letter to the school. But except there was a mass failure in the course, which there was no mass failure, there was the only other failure that they could not do anything about it. And then I remember in school, in child when I was in school, um, there was this girl that gave a testimony that something happened to her like that and then she fasted and prayed. So I decided to do the same thing using the story of um, Esther, how God delivered Esther, Mordecai and the Jews. So I did the same thing. I prayed and I fasted for three days. Then after those days then I went to the school to deliver the letter. Normally I was supposed to go through protocol and um, Signed the letter by the HOD and the course advisor. But then one of my friends just said, I should talk to the lecturer. And I went to talk to the lecturer. And I don't know, I don't know how, but the lecturer was just like, Oh, let me treat your matter right now. Like he treated my matter with such urgency. And it was so nice. The lecturer is not a nice man. <laughs> but it was so nice to me. He did not know me from anywhere. He had no reason to even help me. Then we went to check realized that after everybody in the department it was only my own test result that was not added to my exam results and he added it he did everything for me like while I was in the office. I just want to tell you because my E was changed to a B. Hallelujah. That's failure. E is not failure. 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 Sorry. It's fast now. It's a spoiler. So anyhow, B is better than E. However, when we look at it, so thank us for favor. Praise the Lord, Church. Good morning, everybody. So one day, most morning, like the pastor said that when he said that all the third boys will come outside, so I came out. So he said that when he gets your own door, it will not finish. So the first one is the second one, the first one has gone out. That God has no door. Then I came out. Then he said it will not finish. Oh my. That they have to work and they can bring up mommy. I don't have. Please just get me some good. And God put a total stranger to me. So that helped her. I meant to say, but my mama said she was sick. God was my own helper. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm proud of this thing. We always will protect us and they will obey us and they will bless us in the name of Jesus. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. And secondly, I want to thank God for the success of the Just Company of Future Summit. I want to 
especially thank God for this one because this is the first summit that we did that we didn't run into debt. Number one, this is the first summit that I did that I didn't lost anything because anytime I did so, I always lost my phone. I always lost my phone. So this is the first time that I did that I didn't lost anything. I just want to thank God for everything and everything. And most importantly, that the success of the summit. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for that. When I heard those speakers yesterday and they not collect them, it was free. I don't know what kind of favor yeah, that is occasion. Honestly, that's favor. The what we received yesterday, they run into millions as if people pay for them. But this man is favor that because when they started of favor, go and take the favor. More grace, that was awesome. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I uh, want to thank God for life, I want to thank God for my family, I want to thank God for TK Selection. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for adding a year to my request. I also want to thank God for um, how he has brought me this far, my my business, where he's taking me to, and um, I want to thank God for in fact, everything. I can't list in them anymore. I just want to thank God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
I know it's only God that will take care of you. And they are always getting better. And for the last time that Israel was so sick and he was so bad that I even asked my sister to send a picture for me. He was not looking by any way. But when they took him to the hospital, the doctor said that nothing is wrong. That maybe he's just missing. That's why he's always missing. No, it's not very well. But I thank God that Sweden has not heard anything about that or uh, any other complaint. And I also want to thank God for this sweet family that I'm into. I want to thank God for the love that God has been showing me. Because I remember the last time of 30, 33 hours in his presence. So that daddy gave us an anointing, he pledged the anointing for us, and he said we should take it to our working place, to our house, we should drop it in anywhere we are going. So I took that anointing oil. Oh yeah, my mother is a Muslim, but I was going to say, I hope if she sees anointing, she will not feel bad. But I managed to hide it in, I just read it in the way she did not see. So that day, I did something that I know that it was my fault, and I really know that my mother will not even call me back. I even call our security of that yesterday, I'm not coming. Because I have done something bad that I will not come back. But I was so surprised that my agent called me and said, Let her in the day that you can go that your mother says she will come back. I said, Well, you say you heard me right. You can go. I was so surprised that my mother called me back because I can't believe that what I made mistake, I will never come back to the world. So I want to tell God for that. Even that same day that I did that in daddy said, Where are you getting? But when I greeted that, daddy said, Where are you getting? He said, what belongs to you can never be taken from you, can never be given to any other person. So I just thank God that I believe on that thing happen. Because I really lose hope that I will not get that job again. But I thank God that I stand into that prayer. Hallelujah. 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 We're in the sixth level of favor. I'm sure we know that favor is our is our morning, afternoon, and night. Because God keeps his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for his faithfulness in my life, in my family, and this beautiful family of God. I want to appreciate God from January to this month of August. And I'm appreciating in advance for the remaining days and months that we have left in this year. I want to appreciate God this morning for the Lord adding another year to my husband. Um, this month, um, I appreciate him this gift that God has given to me. I pray his name be exalted continually in his life in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And secondly, I want to appreciate God on behalf of my extended family. Last Sunday, we have to go for baby dedication, and actually, because uh, they want me to be there, you know, the dedication has been shifted from the beginning of the month, and you know. I cannot turn back and tell them again that I'm not coming because anytime we have occasion like that as big mommy, a lot, you know, responsibility is placed on me, you know, especially physically, you know, I can be stressed up. I want to thank God, you know, because in fact this one is so overwhelming that I like God. Please, if you take me to and fro this journey, I will come and give you thanks. And I thank God because I'm here today, you know, to appreciate him for what he has done. I thank him for the gift of men. I thank him for making everything stressless for me, you know, beyond my imagination. I want to give him praise for the baby that, you know, was dedicated. I thank God for the life of the family. I thank God for what God has done, you know, from the beginning of the pregnancy, even to the dedication, and what God will continue to do. I pray that his name will be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.
mistake. That you, you should be sacked or you are not. Father, we want to thank you, Lord. In this favor, scattered of favor, not truly your favor is speaking for us, your favor is working for us. We join our hearts together to say thank you, thank you, Lord. Accept our heart of gratitude and thanksgiving for everything, for journey message, for the success of everything that we do. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's have our seat. And with the joy of the Lord, I would like to call up the true worship as choir. Bless us with the administration this morning. Let's put our hands together for Jesus.
of you understand how to translate in English? We thank God for a living that you are in English. I need to translate that in English. We thank God for the good that we see and the wrongs that we do not see. Let me share a life testimony with you. And those of you when they come this morning, so we're coming, um, we're at Osborne, and there was this car in front of us, changing lane, changing lane, and we're, ah, you know, Shimani, we're just putting, like, them have been drunk, you know, what? stay one lane, that's how we can pass. Anyway, he managed to stay humbly, and we passed. And of course, I was ahead of him. And we passed. Um, Osborne made the bend of that, um, that French, uh, that, that uh, yes, from say, as soon as we made that bend, those of you are familiar with Osborne, to come into um, Nikoi. I just looked at my mirror and I saw the guy had tapped on the curb and he was, you know, was almost going to go to the other side of the road. And fortunately, the curb stopped him. I was like, wow, this guy either is drunk or he's on drugs or something was have happened to him. Now, what am I trying to put out here? That is. Moment of madness will happen while we're beside him because people have run into us. This testimony I gave um, um, today, it happened to me in life one morning like that. I was also going to work. I left home quite early on top of Milan Bridge. So there was this bus, I was behind the bus at the extreme right, I was behind the bus. There was a, a lorry carrying bags of pure water in the middle. So I wanted to overtake both of them. So I left the extreme right, I came to the extreme left. As soon as I came to the extreme left, the lorry carrying back with water swapped to the extreme right and crushed the bus. How the bus not fall into the lagoon? It was only go. So in that case, it just turned and the lorry, so my son said, carry the bag of water as I overtook. The bag of water fell, you know. And the other man trying to bring out here, you are the one that you are seeing when you are on the road. The other people beside you don't know whether they are seeing or not seeing. You have no clue about their, the condition of their car. You don't know anything about that person. You don't know whether that person, that person is on the suicide mission and is looking for many people who are carrying with him. So that's why we say we thank God for the safety that we see and the ones we do not see. We're walking on the road, driving on the road, entering bus, there's danger knocking around about. Danger everywhere. Everywhere there's danger. But God keeps his own. He can want to lock them all. Your voice and say, Father, Father, I thank you for safety, you. for delivering for this, you know, for dangers I can see, and the ones I cannot see, especially for the ones I cannot see, for the dangers that are locking around that I cannot see, for evil that is locking around that I cannot see. Lift up your voice, it's a sin of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for keeping me from every harm. We don't know. Some of us will drink water that has been contaminated. We don't know. But God preserves you and I. God keeps you and I. We commute. We end up on child's bus. We don't know. But because of God, God always keeps us. We lift up the voice of thanksgiving. Can you lift up the voice of thanksgiving? I say, Father, thank you. Keeping me from all dangers. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are grateful.
Our life. A poor life. You are. Let me just thank God because you are alive. You are living and you are in your position. Let me just thank God for provision always. I am not aware of anybody here who has gone to the dungeon to be picking food there. I am not aware of anybody who is here who has gone up in hand, knocking on top. Each one said, Come and give me a cup of Gary. I am not aware of anybody here. Hello, was it? Mr. Mayo that was saying that we counted and were complete, not missing, not broken, not lost. Since this King Chamber leg is started, we have not gone to prison to have bail anybody. Since King Chamber started, we have not observed Billy Billy to be fasting for someone who has not admission for so long. Since the King Chamber started, we have not gone to empty and I say, oh, this person is missing, this child is missing. Will you lift up your voice and be grateful to this God?
you'll, you'll be walking on the road and you'll be talking to yourself. You'll be walking on the road and you'll be picking things. That is when Nigeria happens to you. Oh, Pastor, yes, I'm suffering, I'm not eating, I'm not eating, I'm not all those ones, Nigeria has not happened to you. When Nigeria happens to you, you will not, even, you will not be able to gather yourself. You will not, you, this one now, you are here, at least, you have you hope, you are expecting, you are trusting God that things can get better. But people have lost hope. People have gone mad. People have gone polo. You see people walking on the road, well dressed. Okay, you think that they are all okay, but they have they've lost fear because they can't. They've lost hope about the next day. They've lost hope about the next hour. They've lost hope about everything about them. But thank God, because that is not your lot. That is not your portion. Like I said before, we are not anywhere going to Yaba, Apausi, or Aru, psychiatric hospital, to say this person keep injection, keep this person calm. The problems that we are dealing with is enough to cause stress. It's enough for one blood vessel to just lose and then go. But thank God because we are not going to go. So you are going to lift up your voice and say, Father, despite and despite of all that I'm going through, thank God because I'm not a mental case. Thank God that I've not run into the market naked. Thank God because I have not lost hope. I still have hope. I still believe that things can only get better. Can you lift up your voice and thank God? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
could go on and on and on, and all of a sudden, time is not on my side. And because today is the last Sunday um, this month, and trust God, come September, we're going to uh, start on that, another series, another thing. I just wanted to have a landing in um, in the in the in the in the message I started last um, last Sunday. Otherwise, but please, by all means, please, by all means, make sure that.
Look at two of us. Okay, let's look at one more. Let's look at two scriptures. Luke 9 42. Luke 9 42. Luke 9 42. And inasmuch as yet, inasmuch as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuilt the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. So Jesus performed the miracle of healing the child that was. The disciples could not heal, and Jesus performed that miracle of delivering a demonic child. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matthew 14 28. Matthew 14 28 and 29. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So Jesus performed the miracle of defying the law of gravity. Peter walked upon water. And so many more uh, um, scriptures like that. And so many instances of, so he was a healer. He performed miracles. We had signs of wonders for him. He, the crowd stood in awe of him. The crowd marveled at him. The crowd wondered at, you know, as this person. Luke chapter 9, verse 43. Luke 9.43 Luke 9.43 Luke 9.43 And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. They were all what? Amazed at the mighty power of God. But why they wondered everyone, everyone of all everyone at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. In Luke chapter 4, verse 2, the same thing. Luke 4, 22. Luke 4, 22. And all bear in witness and wonder at the gracious words. And wonder at the gracious words. Uh, let me read um, TPT. I think I particularly like Luke. Luke, what was that? Luke 4. 22. Okay. Everyone was impressed by how well Jesus spoke in, oh. in awe of the beautiful words of grace that came from his lips. They were in awe of him. They all stood in awe of him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Jesus was not just a healer, was not just a miracle worker, was not just, you know, giving to signs and wonders, but they stood in hope and praised Master Jesus. Amen. So, we see Jesus, who was in all of the states. Now, what was the secret of Jesus for these signs, wonders, miracles, and all of that? The answer, like we said yesterday, is in the place of the wilderness experience. It is the place of the Lord be God. It is the place of come ye apart. Jesus always had time, times of alone with God. Jesus always had times of alone with God. Mark chapter 6, verse 46. We're going to read all of this. Mark chapter 6, verse 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. When he had done away with the crowd, with all the showmanship, with all the matter, with all the apparatus and all of that, Jesus sent them away and he did what? He went to the mountain to pray. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Luke 6, 12. Luke chapter 6 and verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. And continued all night in prayer to God. What would have thought that Jesus was God and he didn't need to pray? But the Bible says he went, he departed, and he continued all night. You know, you can ask, so what was he just praying? I, mean, I always say that, I, mean, I like my imagination. Jesus was God. So what was he praying that he needed all night to pray? If Jesus needed all night to pray, we will just pray, 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 we'll just get up and we'll just go. We cannot do exploits. It's not a cause. The template for exploit, the pattern for exploits is as we see here. He went all night, all 
night. The Bible says, and he continued all night in prayer to God. Mark 14, 32. Mark 14, 32. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit ye here, while I shall do what? Pray. Pray. Even at the very last hour, at the very last hour, we are still going to pray. Matthew 14, 23. Matthew 14, 23. And when he had sent this multitude away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. He was still praying till evening. He was lost in prayers. Luke 11, 1. And it came to pass that he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples to pray. So they saw that he was spending time to pray. So Jesus had several alone, several times of alone with God. Jesus had several times of what? Alone with God. Have you had, when was the last time you had alone with God? When was the last time you had alone with God? When was the last time you had the witness experience? When was the last time he came in about? If you do exploits, if you do tangible exploits, you must, you must have times of alone with God. And it's so interesting. Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, same thing. Luke 4, 1, Matthew 4, 1, same thing. Jesus, immediately after he was baptized, that the power of God came upon him, and a voice, the Holy Ghost came like, like a dove, and the voice from heaven. So we see God the Son in the physical flesh, we see God the Holy Spirit like a dove, and we see God the Father speak. So we see the, uh, 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 the manifestation of the triumph God. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Right? The voice came, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Immediately after that, there was something that was profound. The Bible says that and he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Hello? This man has not been made manifest. God the Father spoke. The people heard. Because if the people did not care, it would not have been, you know, Jesus, God would not have spoken. There was, the Bible says, and the heavens opened and is it projected? No, okay. So if you go, this is no for one, right? If you go to the uh, chapter three, the end part of it, you will see that the Bible says that the heavens open, right? And the voice spoke. The, the, the Holy Spirit came like a dove, right? If you were the one, what would you do? You would look for a church to go to, you can organize a crusade. Because God has just shown you now, you have just been. Made manifest. I've just been sure that this is my beloved daughter. But the Bible says that he was led. Okay, you go, go back to forward. He was led of the Holy Spirit to the wilderness. Why? Because it is in the wilderness that there is an equipping. Let me read what I have here. Jesus was led in the wilderness. He embarked on 40 days prayer and fasting. This was a period of consecration, preparation, equipping. Endurement, impartation, and testing. The wilderness experience, the wilderness experience, the wilderness time is a period for you to be consecrated. It's a period of preparation. Before you are launched forth, before you can do exploits, you must be prepared. It is a period of building muscles. It's a period of equipping. It's a period of impartation, endurement, and testing. If you don't go through the wilderness experience, God cannot release how on you. It is not a God. If you not, because this is the template, this is the template. Now, don't be Jesus with this. And you who you follow, not be Jesus. Jesus had to go through. The Bible says that he led obedience by the things which he suffered. This was a pattern. So you cannot do it outside of this pattern. Before the manifestation of Jesus for his ministry, he had to go through this. You must go through this. For the release of power for exploits. 40 days. He went to the wilderness to 
be concentrated. The way that you experience that's where you are alone with God. No distractions. One of the one of the dramas I think was uh, Kuruza presented that uh, you know that drama. We, and after that day, honestly, I became conscious that true, true. Yes, there's Bible on your phone, but the Bible on your phone is not for your quiet time. The Bible on your phone is not for quiet time. There's Bible on my iPad, but give me that old time religion. Give me that old time. Please, the Bible on your phone is not for your quiet time. It is for not let on the go. When you want to do quiet time, please put your phone down. Carry Bible, physical Bible, and carry your pad. Why am I using that part? It's because I started the someone when I was in the office. If I started the someone at home, I would use my old pad. If I was in my wife, I said, I've, I've forgotten how to use this instead. Go, oh, let me go back to the good old Bible, physical Bible, and notes. Pastor, is it wrong to have Bible on your phone? Of course not, but it is not for your quiet time. Because when you are doing quiet time and using your Bible, that's when you just see a message will come, Snapchat will come, uh, Facebook will come, all these people are you distracted. It happens to Pastor. I'm telling you life. That's why I said, after that drama, I said to myself that this drama is speaking to us all. This drama is speaking to us all. And well, one of the reasons why, of course, is because of the various, the, the app it has various translations. So, you know, you can, but thank God now, this one, I didn't load anything on it, so I won't be distracted. So, this is what I'll be using to check Bible for all the various translations you want to. Because when you don't go for the witness experience, you cannot be concentrated. So, the witness experience is to remove any form of distraction. If you are going to do exploits, you must be empowered. And empowerment does not come until you are what? Concentrated. Concentrated is a period of equipping. And human and building your muscles. It is for impartation and it is for testing. If you have not been tried and tested, you cannot be committed. God cannot commit that with your hands. So you and I must experience the wilderness experience. We must. We must. It is not palatable, it is not pleasant, it is not nice, but we must. If you want to exp- if you want to manifest, you know, and do great experts. And like I said last Sunday, don't say, oh, it's only pastors and ministers that can do it with SPS anyway. Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. Protect you. Read it last Sunday. Let's read it again. And these signs shall follow pastors, bishops, and deacons. And these signs shall follow only pastors. These signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Are these signs following you? Yes, sir. Say yes, sir. Okay. If this sign must follow you, you must go the wilderness experience. So, this is not for only pastors or bishops or only men of God or those that are going into full time ministry. It is for every believer, like the drama, those of us that were around at the drama. Um, I don't know, the, I don't know the name of the act, uh, but it was uh, Minister Education that, you know, where he said that, oh, he can't go, but God used him. So this sense shall follow that. What will happen? My name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They take if they think any poison and them, they will take up some All of these things you can only do these things after what the wilderness experience. How do I know that? So let's go. I like look. Let's look at the look account of that encounter. So look chapter four. Starting from verse fourteen. So, up until verse 13, and verse 13 says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, it departed from him for his season. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Until Jesus had finished the encounter of the wilderness experience, there was no spread of his fame. There was no spread of his fame. The Bible says, And he returned in the power of the Spirit. And there went out a fame of him throughout the regions round about. Until you come out of the wilderness experience, you are still the local champion. If you would manifest Mark chapter 16, you must go through the wilderness experience.
Immediately after the winner's experience, Jesus returned to the power of the Holy Spirit and his favor turned abroad. Without the winner's experience, you are still the local champion, you are not able to do spiritual experience. It was only after this winner's experience that Jesus declared his purpose. Now, remember what I told you that Jesus was, he went to the baptism, but he did not declare his purpose. He went, he was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. After the wilderness experience, look at what he said in verse 21. Luke 4 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is the scripture. Of, what is the scripture fulfilled in his ear? Start from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So Jesus did not begin the preaching until the witness experience. He sent me to heal broken hearted. He did not do healing until the witness experience. To preach deliverance to captives, he didn't do any deliverance until after the witness experience. You're coming of sight to the blind. He didn't do that until after the winner's experience. And to say that liberty that are bruised, he did not do that until after the winner's experience to preach the acceptable of the law. And he closed the book and gave back to them. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilling your ears. So, brothers and sisters, doing extraordinary exploits or doing you know supernatural exploits or doing exploits that that is that defies human knowledge. Will come only after the wilderness experience. It was only after the wilderness experience that Jesus declared his purpose. After the desert or wilderness experience, Jesus began to freely heal and deliver those that were oppressed. How do I know that? Look at so after that, John to verse 36. And that's all. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, what a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out. And the, fame, and, his, and the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. He spoke as one who had authority. He commanded devils to come out. Until after the wilderness experience, before then, he didn't do that. After the desert experience, after the wilderness experience, Jesus began to do great exploits. He began to freely to heal and to deliver all those who were oppressed of the devil. So, what is the need for me? I have again apologized because I was rushing because I want to get to this landing. So, what is the need for me? John chapter 14 and verse 12. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Verily, I say unto you, when Jesus says verily, verily, verily twice, it means take it and take note because this is an important message I want to pass across to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believed on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do because I go unto my Father. We have believers in the house. Yes, sir. Is this verse 12 talking to you? Yes, sir. I say unto you, he that believed on me. Do you believe on him? Yes, sir. Jesus is saying that you, are, you, will do, you will do the works he has done and greater works. So God or Jesus is expecting us to do the same exploits like he did. For eyes to pop up, for ears to pop up, for tongues to be loose, and for all these diverse things that he did. God is calling each and every one of us into a meaningful and impactful life. Don't settle for less. Don't be a mere spectator or a bystander. I want to challenge each and every one of us. Yes, of us may end and we say, okay, it's no longer the month of spiritual experience. Whatever it is about September is, God is challenging you and I to rise and be counted. Enough of being a mere mediocre or being a bystander or being a regular guy. God does not want a regular Christian. God wants a Christian who is on fire for him. And I see with all sense of boldness and responsibility, and I have said, I've been saying this since this kid, like it was in store. God's grace, gifting, and calling is not only to pastors. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, let's demystify this office. Who says that God cannot use you to heal and to raise the dead? Why do you think it's only pastor that can do that? Why do you think that God cannot use you to speak life to somebody? Why do you think it's only pastor? 
Yes, pastor is anointed, pastor is blessed, but you also are anointed, then you also blessed. This is scripture, Mark chapter 16, John chapter 14. God is looking for believers who will be on fire to do great exploits for him. He's looking to anoint the pew as he's anointing the pulpit. God is looking for the ordinary, so called, in quote, ordinary, regular church believer who would arise. Who will say that I'm set on fire? Who would go and have that wilderness experience and come back set on fire and turn everything around? That can God count on you? Can God count on me? Or when somebody in your office, this is your own letter scripture, where's Mr. Bayo? Where's Mr. Bayo? Let him come and pray. When you take charge, I take you just how you want. Because the same anointing. That heals headache. The same anointing is in the name of the Lord. It's not, it's not your power. It's the message we make is that we think that it is our power. And we think that, you know, we are doing it in our ability. We are not doing it in, in our ability. It is God. Like yesterday at the, at the, at the, at the um, uh, what do you call it? The, no, not the official service. The, night, the, the drama night. But I, there was a word. God gave a word. So there is somebody here who who is who is supporting the God and is is you know, she's with, if I actually said she was with God, waited for like two or three minutes, nobody came out. When I after we are going, when I was at the door, the old man came and said she's one. I said, I'm sorry, they are not in a depth of the pulpit. This boy you are seeing, I don't even know. So when you when you refuse to come out and you come and see me in the corner, we'll see. It's, I'm just a vessel. The unction came then when I was standing on the pulpit and the word came, your deliverance will have happened then. But you come and meet me now, I'm too weak, I can't do anything. I now pointed it to Pastor Shiva and said, this one is a little bit you can't meet me. <laughs> they can't help you. They can't help you. I went home. Then people refused to come out and they are shy. So you, 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 God can use you. God can use anybody. It's not you. At that point in time, it's not you. What the standard? It's unction that comes upon you to do great exploits. Do great exploits. So don't think that it's only pastors that are anointed. Yes, don't go for the anointing upon the head of pastors. And I'm not saying this to disrespect pastors, please. Because I always like to balance my message. I'm not saying that uh, all these gay men of God, we are equal with them and can just be talking anyhow to them. No, I'm not saying that when it comes to the use of God, God can use you. God is looking for a willing vessel. Just be willing and God will use you. Don't, don't settle for less. Don't be a mere spectator or bystander. Let your life count for something. Discover and walk in purpose. For this purpose was said of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is your purpose? Can God entrust you to say, okay, in Ogombo, have a son there. And no demon is permitted to terrorize people in Ogombo because I have my son there who can take charge and take authority. Can, can God rely on you? Say, ah, in Ogombo, there's no pastor. So, God, we are sorry. You don't have pastor here. So, you need to bring pastor for us. For bring us up here. Can, in your place of work, in your, in your marketplace, you know you as a Christian and there's a child who is misbehaving, who you know, is unruly. God trust you to take that take charge in your marketplace. And you rise up and say, We have had enough of recording because I'm on, online, I can't say some things. No, no organization. And some of us rose, rose up and said, Enough is enough. We have had enough of this. We cannot remain this organization and these things are happening. We must pray. And to the glory of God, that trend stopped. Doing exploits is for everybody, but must have that wilderness experience. Let your life come for something. Dis discover and work your purpose. God is calling us beyond a life of mediocre, uh, mediocrity, beyond a life of average. Can we stretch ourselves and go beyond our current limit? You'll be amazed at all the seemingly impossible things that God can use you to do. Yes, you can do all things to Christ that strengthens you. Philippians 4.13 That strength is released in the place of intimacy with God. The alone moments. Like Joshua in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, 11b. Can you stay God's presence 247? 
Like David in Psalm 84 verse 10, can you remain at, at the doorstep in God's sanctuary? These were guys who stood, who stayed, who said that I would remain in this sanctuary, I'd rather be a doorkeeper and be in God's sanctuary than be out there in the palace with men of wickedness. And because David knew and understood and appreciated staying in God's presence, little wonder that God anointed David to be king and to ensure that he had someone to occupy his role forever. Little wonder that all the generals that could have you know, taken over Moses, nobody could because they did not find anybody worthy like Joshua. And the secret for Joshua being appointed after Moses was because he stood in the temple, in the sanctuary, to forsake. Can I encourage somebody to long for his presence? Can I encourage somebody to desire like never before that I just want to be your presence? Dwelling daily. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me here to you. I just want to be where you are. In your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. I want to be where you are. Dwell in your presence. Feast at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be with you. Can somebody sing that song? To keep your love with me. Ever before my eyes. This is my prayer. Make my strong desire. That in my secret heart. No other love competes. No rival throne survives. And I serve only you. Can somebody long to be in the presence of God? Two, four, seven, and that alone makes the God rise upon the feet. There's a longing only you can feel, a raging tempest only you can steal. My soul is just the Lord to know you as I know, to drink from the river of that that flows from your throne. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you my more. How I long to be deeper in love with you. Can you pray? Can you cry out to God? Father, I desire those alone moments, alone with you, that I can encounter you, that I can be empowered and you, that, you know, energized, I can build muscle. I want those alone moments, oh God, that I can be counted to be used, oh God. Lord, here I am. Use me. Can you pray? Can you pray? Deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close in your embrace. Take me deeper. Deeper than I
would have is not enough to appreciate God. It just as we sing, we had a thousand tongues, we had a million offering. It's not enough to thank God. It's not enough to appreciate thanksgiving to God. It's more. But with the little that we have, God is happy because we bring Him a cheerful heart. So let's raise it up to the Lord. If we've done that. Let's speak to our seed. Father, we thank you for the seed in our hands, O oh Lord. Thank you because you are the one that gives seed to the sower. Thank you because we are blessed to be sowers in your kingdom. Because we know that the blessing that comes with sowing is a harvest form of reaping. And so, Father, we want to say thank you with the seed in our hands. And of course, with our thanksgiving offering as well, we want to say thank you. It's not all that we are. It cannot make up for all that you do for us. But with our hearts and with the joy, and thanksgiving on our lips, we just want to say thank you, Lord. And for those of us that are here with our tithes as well, we thank you for it's been another month of, of, of labor. And we have brought our tithe, we have brought the 10% of our increase into your hands. Father, we want to say thank you, Lord. And we pray for the blessing that comes with giving, the blessing that comes with tithing, the blessing that comes with offering ourselves at the sacrifice. Father, we say, we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. We say, be thou exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, because of time, we're just going to take the announcements and the offering basket and go around. Because please, as well, the um, account details of the church has been projected. You can also do transfer to our account. But please, when you do that, please make sure you feel this in the paper and drop it so that we can know for accountability sake and we can capture it you know, when we have it to our accounts and all that. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Please let's listen to the following announcements. Today is the last Sunday of the month and because the last, um, yeah, the last Sunday, they said to me, Oh Lord, said to me, Oh Lord, is an outreach of our Father and the Lord, Reverend takes place every last Sunday of the month and this Sunday is taking place live. The venue is at the headquarters which is number 42 Association Avenue by Valley Road for stop and the thing is what is revivals oh Lord Hallelujah. It's very clear because we are getting to the end of the day. People are leaving revival at this time. God will revive every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. So please let's be there, let's pray, let's support, and most especially, let's come expectant. This said to me a lot, so whichever area you want God to say to you, open your mouth, you speak to the ears of God, and you will surely answer in the mighty name of Jesus. So that's said to me a lot this evening. Alright, um, Wednesday, our midweek service, we have our midweek service here every Wednesday. The time is 6 p.m. Saints. We have been running a practical Christianity series, and I think this Wednesday is going to be the last one. And it's going to be awesome. So please yeah. make sure you don't miss it. And um, be here for 6 p.m. And if by chance you are not able to be here, please make sure that you join us online. We have our online page on Facebook. Please follow us on I think Instagram. Follow us and uh, enjoy the last. We're going to have the last series of this um, practical Christianity series. It's been, it's been wonderful. I don't know about you, I've learned a lot. And I, I believe that I'm not just learning, but it's from the personal experiences. It's just awesome. So you know, when you see people, you don't know what they've gone through. It's, uh, it's packaged now. I hear they say it's packaged, but it's a good package. It's unto the Lord. Set the moment for the month of September. September is always a special month. 
that was our special testimony so this morning. Expectants. If I were you, I would give to that expectation for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Um, first Sunday in the month of September is the third of uh, September. And of course, our fresh impartation will take place for all workers and then attending workers. The time is 8.30. And the um, first Sunday as well, we're going to have our um, board meeting. So please, as an assistant, please take note. And of course, that's Sunday our um, service will kick off at 9 a.m. Fresh impartation is 8.30. Uh, our service will kick off by 9 a.m. So please join us. And God will bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I, I, um, I've been instructed to announce um, the Made Nation. They are, they'll be having their holistic evangelism thing before the year runs out. So please, they need items. Uh, clothing, books, shoes, items that maybe you are no longer using. I mean, if you are using, and you just want to be a blessing because it's for to be a blessing to people. And so that means that those items must be in good condition. You can begin to, you know, bring them to church and then hand it over to um, Sister Sarah and I think all the executive Sister Faith, Kish, any of the executives of the Made Nation. So please begin to put things together. Begin to look into your wardrobes and all that. Things, items to be a blessing. God will bless you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time? The first time. But we're all welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today is uh, Brother um, Chris, uh, um, famous by the his online, Brother Chris. Uh, but we'll ask his wife to come and stand. For us to pray, where's the valley? So come and stand. Oh, he's here, he's live online, he's, he's participating. So, all right, come and just pray as we stretch our hands for Brother Chris before me, asking that the Lord will bless him indeed, that the Lord will do. Um, for my standing for the twins, it was a couple of days ago, so they're still very fresh. That the Lord will bless them. We will pray for the twins, treasure, and Bible. Also, pray for Brother Chris Ufumo. Lord, as they celebrate their bodies, O God, let good things, great things, glorious things, beautiful things, righteous things happen for them. Pray for Brother Chris as a father, as a husband, as a head of a home. All that is it takes, all that is required to be the head it did. Lord, give unto him. Bless the work of his hand. Bless his business. Bless is going out. Bless is coming in. Increase him on all fronts. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let his faith level be on the increase, O God. As he strives, O God, to do good things, even to provide and to show leadership, to show good examples, and to lead his family in the way of the Lord. May he never suffer any setback. Lord, as he goes in search of what to eat, may nothing hit him. In the name of Jesus, we pray for him, we pray for his own children. Lord, we cover them in the name of Jesus, and we ask that your hand of good will be upon them for good in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father Lord, for church of Babylon's Obaji. We are grateful for these ones. As they grow, they will grow in your wisdom, they will grow in your knowledge, they will grow in your understanding. The eyes of the Lord will want to unfold their behalf. We shall not sorrow over them, no negative or crisis where they are concerned in the name of Jesus. And we you take this time to pray for all those who have celebrated their birthday in the month of August and a couple of days before the end of August and those who will still celebrate. Lord, in blessing you will bless. In increase will increase. In multiply you multiply. And every one of them will have testimonies. Of course, as it's ended, they will be carrying mega testimonies into September in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless them, your name of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just to emphasize, please. Um, the um, um, what do you call it? Early morning segment prayer on Friday. We want to encourage everybody to please log in. Go ahead, get the get the app now. If you have a smartphone, just meet any of the technical guys. Just to download the app, and you see the ID. It's not very nice when you know. You remember that it should be physical, and we thought that let's make it. Let's make life convenient for all of us. Let's do it online, and we don't see people. And then we ask oh, people for God, they didn't remember, uh, they need to be reminded. Please remind yourself, set alarm. And if you need somebody to remind you, tell that person to remind you. Please, we'd like everybody to be on the prayer line. Let's start off September powerfully. 
and go. Bless us in Jesus' name. Now, to wrap, wrap up, we want to um, we recognize and celebrate all those who have joined us online. Um, the party boy, like I said, is online. Um, Brother Chris, Brother Wale is online. Um, my daughter, um, Sister Lizzie, she's at work, she's online. Um, Kodi Kodi, she's in Paracos, she's online. My sisters um, in the UK, um, Reverend uh, Lam Emmanuel, Reverend um, Dayo. Additional, we celebrate you, Mass, we thank God for your lives. Uh, freedom, uh, uh, freedom, runaway freedom is online. Um, Brother, Brother Ladu is online. Uh, Minister Roke Leshi is online. And um, Sister Temi uh, Demola, she also is away. She's in offer. Don't tell me what she's doing in offer. She's online as well. <laughs> and who else is online? And um, yeah, those are the people that, that are online. Uh, the Lord bless you all. Um, God bless and increase you. And those of us who are here, those of us who are physically here, we will receive our blessings. So I'm going to our feet as we take the second stance of the national anthem as the prayer for Nigeria. Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, things are hard, things are difficult, Christ of things are always up, up, up. Things are going out of the roof. But Lord, we yet trust you. We yet look at you. We yet believe you. The Lord, you turn the good old times around for good for us in Nigeria in Jesus' name. Amen. Touch our leaders to God and let them do your will. Amen. Touch everyone who is in position of authority or those who can who are influencers, those who can influence policies that they may remember the masses and only take decisions that are favorable to the generality of the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be ease, O oh God. Let there be, let there be, you know, remediation to the, the suffering of the people. Lord, help us to deal with insecurity. Help us to deal with hardship. Help us to deal with all the things that are making life so unbearable for us. Lord, we look unto you. There's nowhere else to go to. We can't run. Even if we have another passport, Nigeria is our home. Nigeria is where we can be comfortable to say we are citizens and it's our home. Therefore, Lord, turn the good times around for us again in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you because we know you touch the leaders from the president to the least that they must do your will in Jesus' name. And so, Father, as we go, we go in the power of your mind. We thank you for such an awesome time in your presence. We thank you for the impact. We thank you because we are convinced, O God, that only good is God unto Israel, and only God would you be unto good would you be unto us in Jesus' name. We go in the power of your mind, just like Jesus returned in the power of the might of the Spirit. Lord, we go this week, especially the last week in the month.
upon the Holy Ghost. We go to do exploits. We go to lay hold and to claim territories. We go to break yokes. We go, O oh God, to lay hold on our promises. Whatever you have promised us since first of August, that is yet to manifest. In this last week of August, to be made manifest to God. Lord, our testimonies will abound on the more. Admission for those seeking admission, jobs for those seeking job opportunities, breakthroughs for those who 